Alright guys, today we're going to talk about how finding the real roots of a polynomial equation can be used for a real life application. Alright, so why don't we go ahead and read this word problem. It says a manufacturer designs a box with the width 1 inch less than the length and the height 6 inches greater than the length. Find the length if the volume is 36 inches cubed. Alright, well in order to do this problem, we need to know the equation for a volume of a box. And that's simply going to be length times width times height. All right. And from here, we can start filling in our values. Okay. Well, we know the length is going to be, well, we don't know what the length is, so we can just call it x. We know the width is going to be one inch less than the length. So we can say x minus one. And then the height says six inches greater than the length. So x plus six. Okay, and this is all going to be equal to my volume, which is 36 inches cubed. Okay, well at this point, we can actually figure out what the length is going to be by solving for the zeros okay, of this. But before we do that, we need to expand this out into a polynomial. Right? So at the end, you're actually going to have multiple zeros here, but only one of them will work out realistically, and we'll talk about that at the end. But first, we need to expand this out. So to expand this out, we're just going to look at this part right here. We'll do FOIL and then we'll simply distribute the x. All right, so starting right here, if we do FOIL now, it's gonna be x squared, and this is 6x minus x, so plus 5x, and then negative one times six, that will be negative six, okay? And again, this is all equal to 36. Distribute the x, so now we have x cubed plus 5x, squared minus 6x, this is all equal to 36, okay? Now remember, we're solving for the zeros here. So in order to do that, we need to move this 36 over and set it equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll write the final polynomial up top, what would you have? So we're going to have x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x and then minus 36 all equal to 0. Okay. Now at this point we need to go ahead and try to factor this. Well you may be looking at this and we can't. So in order to go about factoring it we have to use the rational root theorem. All right, we have to use the rational root theorem, find some possible rational roots here. And once we do, hopefully bring this down a degree, so then it's a quadratic, and then we can try to um, factor it from there. So again, if you don't know what the rational root theorem is, make sure you check out my video on that. Okay, but if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you're comfortable with the rational root theorem, and we're gonna go right into it. So again, the rational root theorem is just P over Q. Okay, where p is my constant and q is my coefficient on my leading term. All right, well, in this point, we just have to get factors for both of them. So factors for my constant and factors for my leading coefficient, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. So some factors of negative 36. We don't have to write them all out. We just write a few of them, so plus or minus one plus or minus two, plus or minus three, right? And this would keep going on. And if I really need to, I can keep writing more out, but we'll start with that for now. Well, this is just one, so my factors of that are going to be plus or minus one. All right, now we just simply divide each one of these out. And when we do that, we will get plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and plus or minus three, okay? Well, since we're using the rational root theorem here, we now have to do synthetic division 
to test out my possible rational roots. So let's go ahead and set up my synthetic division. Remember, if you skip a term, you have to put a zero for the coefficient. Well, in this case, I didn't skip any terms, so I don't have to put any zeros for any coefficient. So I'm just going to write it out. This is a 1. This is going to be a 5, a negative 6, and a negative 36. And then let's just pick a possible rational root. Well, I'm going to pick negative 3. Test out negative 3 here. So let's go ahead and draw in the synthetic division bar. Negative 3. Alright, and here we go. So we bring down the 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. This becomes 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. A negative 6 and a negative 6, negative 12. And then negative 12 times a negative 3 is positive 36. And if you look here, my remainder becomes 0. So since it is a 0, that tells us that this is in fact a root or a 0 of this polynomial. So I'm going to just record that down, that negative 3 is in fact a root of that polynomial. All right? And remember, since we just divided, this naturally went down a degree, so now we're at x squared instead of x cubed. And this is what we wanted, because now we can try to factor it again. So now we're at x squared, this is x, and this is my constant. All right? And if we were to write this out, we would have x squared plus 2x minus 12. All right? And again, this is all equal to 0. So what we're going to do at this point, we're going to try to factor this out to get the remaining zeros. All right, so let's just erase this. And I'm going to write this nice and big here. We have x squared plus 2x minus 12 equal to 0. All right. All right, so at this point, we're dealing with a quadratic, so we can try to use the AC method here. Well, when I do A times C, negative 12 times 1, right, I will get negative 12. And then we say to ourselves, what two numbers when we multiply are going to be negative 12, but add up to positive 2. And the answer is, those numbers don't exist. So in this case, since we're dealing with a quadratic, we either have to use the quadratic formula, or we could complete the square here. All right, for this example, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, but if you wanted to, you could go ahead and complete the square. So let's just use the quadratic formula here to find the remaining zeros. Remember, you should be familiar with the quadratic formula by now, so I'm going to go right into this. So negative b, that will be negative 2, plus or minus the square root of, well, that's going to be b squared, so so just be 4 minus 4 AC, right? Well, A is 1, C is negative 12, so that's going to be just negative 12, right? And then times 2A, in this case it's just 2. So at this point, we can just go ahead and simplify underneath the radical. Again, this is coming from the quadratic formula. You should be comfortable with that formula. If not, make sure you look up the formula so you know where this is coming from. So we're going to simplify underneath here, and when we do that, so negative 4 times negative 12, and then plus 4, so we get 52, all underneath that radical. Okay, so we will have here negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 52 all over 2. All right, and now I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit differently. So I'm going to write negative 2 plus the square root of 52 all over 2 will be one root. The other one is going to be negative 2 minus the square root of 52 all over 2. Okay, so let's erase so we have room here. Okay, so here are my other two roots. 
And what I'm going to do is actually simplify this down a little bit further. Okay, so what we'll have here is negative 1 plus the square root of 52 all over 2. Okay, all I did was just simplify it down. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1, and then the square root of 52 over 2, we just leave it like that. Same thing here. We'll get negative 1 minus the square root of 52 all over 2. Okay? Now, when you do both of these operations out, okay, let's see what we get on this first one. So if we do negative 1 plus the square root of 52 all over 2, this is about, all right, we'll say about 2.61, 2.61. All right, and if we do this out, this will be about negative 1 minus the square root of 52 all over 2, about negative 4.61. Okay. Well, what this tells us, right, remember, negative 3, 2.61, and negative 4.61, those are all my roots. Well, notice we have 3 here, and we just solved for x, so which one makes sense here? Well, I'm dealing with a negative here, so that can't be the length. I'm dealing with a negative here, that also can't be the length, because remember, you can't have a negative length. So right here would be your final answer. And you can actually circle this whole thing. All right, if you want a more accurate answer, leave it in this form up here. All right, but it's about 2.61 inches. All right, so this would be your final answer. Notice how we eliminated both this root and this root because again, we can't have a negative length. So again, your final answer would be right here.